Greetings, I'm Professor K. And in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about installing Nessus using Docker on our Kali installation. So prior to doing anything major to our Kali operating system, such as installing a new piece of software or a new program, let's make sure that we do an update, an upgrade, and a distribution upgrade to ensure that our Kali machine has all the latest and the greatest files from the distribution centers. Now once you have ensured that your Kali machine has been updated, just go on up to Machine and take a snapshot real quick. Give it a user-friendly name such as No Nessus Install. That'll tell you that this is a Kali installation prior to having Nessus installed and you'll be able to roll back in the event that you have a catastrophic event. Now before we can download a Nessus container from the Docker site we're going to have to install the docker program so if, to do this we're going to use a script the script has been created for us up on the internet it's up on github and to start this process we're going to create an empty text file my preferred text editor is nano but you're free to use any text editor you choose so at the prompt i've typed in nano space docker underscore install dot sh this is going to open up a blank text file for me to input the script language that we're going to use to install the Docker program. We now have a blank text file and now I'm going to go out to the internet and I'm going to get that script that I need to input into this empty text file. So to do this I'm just going to open up a browser and I'm going to go on out using the link that is inside the lab file. If you prefer to do a search for this script, you can do that by just looking for a Nessus install script by decidingly gray. Just search for that up on the internet using Google search or any of your favorite search engines and you'll be able to be taken out to the GitHub site where you can download this. Now we're looking at this code in the raw format. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything just like that. Now I'm going to open up my Kali program and there is my empty text file for this script. Now I'm just going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to paste from the clipboard just like that. I can move through the script and I can see that everything is in place. Now once I have everything in place I'm just going to hit control X. That's going to go ahead and allow me to save the changes to this file and to do that I'm just going to type in Y and now I'm going to hit enter to exit. Now I can type in ls and I can see that the script is now available up inside of the root of my Kali installation and here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. Now at the prompt I need to change the permissions on the script file to make it executable. To do that I'm going to use the change mod command type in change mod plus capital X and now I'm just going to right click and paste the name of the file that I want to make executable. And that would be the docker install.sh file that we just created. I'll hit enter. Comes back to the prompt letting me know that that command completed successfully. We're now ready to run the script. Now to do this I'm just going to type in sh space docker underscore install dot sh. And I'll hit enter. Now the script's going to run. Do not interrupt the script while it is running. Now if you finish installing the Docker program and you receive the following error message, what you're going to have to do is run a couple of additional commands and then rerun the script. And if you do receive that error message at the end of the script stating that the Docker Hello World command cannot run, then all you have to do is just run these two commands at that prompt. Run this command first and then run this command secondly and then rerun the script and the program will install successfully. Now both of these commands are up inside of the lab file. So I ran those two commands and now I'm going to rerun the script. And you can see now that the script has completed successfully and I get that message back from the Docker server letting me know that yes 
your Docker program is installed and is working correctly. Let's go ahead and clear my screen. And now we're ready to install the Nessus container that's going to run inside of our Docker program. So the first thing we have to do is pull down the Nessus container from the Docker repository. And we're going to do that running the following command. Docker space pull. And we're going to pull down the tenable official forward slash Nessus container. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now that our container for Nessus has completed its downloading from the Docker site, we can move on with actually creating an instance of Nessus up inside of the Docker program. Now that we have downloaded the Nessus container from the Docker site, we're ready to create an instance of Nessus up inside of our Docker program. To do this, I've copied and pasted the following command from my lab file. I want to make sure there's no mistakes. Now once I have that in place, I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And the container has been created. Now to confirm that the container that we just created up inside of our Docker program is up and running, at the prompt, I just typed in docker space ps space dash small letter a. And that's the command right here. Now again, all these commands are available to you up inside of the lab file. And so you can see that here's the image that we downloaded. Here's where it's at. It's been up for about a minute. And here's the port that it's currently running on. And the name of the container is tenableofficial underscore nessus. This is the container ID. If you need to start or restart the container, you're going to need the ID. So you can use this command here to find the ID so that you can do a restart or a start of the container that you want to run inside of the Docker program. Now, for instance, if you've got more than one container running, then yes, you would want to get the container ID so that you can run that, that specific container up inside of Docker. And so let's go ahead and minimize our terminal here. And we're going to open up a browser. Up inside of the address bar, you're just going to type in localhost colon the port that Nessus is running on, 8834. And this is going to begin the launch of Nessus inside of our web browser. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Now, when you first start or when you first launch Nessus, it's not going to like the certificate. So you're going to have to go down here to advanced, scroll on down, and you're going to have to accept the risk and continue. Now you're welcome to Nessus. So what are you going to do if you have a problem with Nessus and the installation becomes corrupted? Well, containerization and virtualization are pretty much the same thing. Containerization is the emulation of software, where virtualization is the emulation of hardware, but they're both virtual. So your installation of Nessus up inside of Docker is nothing more than a virtual install, if you will, of the software that contains all of the programs and software that Nessus needs to run inside of its own sandbox. So it doesn't interfere with Kali. So what that means is we can go ahead and uninstall Nessus if we have a problem with it and then just reinstall it. Let's see how we do that. So the first thing we have to do is we have to stop Nessus. That is to say we have to stop the Nessus container from running. So I've typed in docker space ps space dash small letter a and this is going to give us all of the containers that are currently available. What I'm doing is I'm going to find the name for the container that I need to stop. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And over here to the right, you can see that the name of the container is called tenable official underscore Nessus. I'm just going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to copy that. So the way that we power down or stop a container running inside of the Docker program is we type in Docker space stop followed by the name of that container. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And so now to remove this container from inside of Docker, all I have to do is type in Docker space RM space whatever the name of the container is. In this case, my container for Nessus is called tenable official underscore Nessus. 
I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back to the prompt, letting me know that that command completed successfully. Now, we can go ahead and use our up arrow, and we can again run the docker space ps space dash small letter a command to see what containers I currently have available to me up inside of docker. And you'll notice that the Nessus container is no longer available. So now that you have Nessus removed gracefully from your Docker program, you can reinstall it gracefully just using the steps shown in the lab for installing Nessus or creating a Nessus container up inside of your Docker program. And so in this short video presentation, you got to see how we go about creating a container for Nessus to run in inside of the Docker program. So if you've got any questions, you've got any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.